Hello again, Jules fans. Welcome back to the latest episode of Jules in the Blood TV. And as you can see, this gentleman to my right is the next victim of Jules in the Blood chats to. I'm pleased to say that my latest guest is none other than French midfielder, Timmy Dieng. Timmy, hey, first of all, welcome to the channel. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to come and spend some time talking to me about your career in general, yeah. but obviously, more importantly, being a Jules channel, yeah. about life in Kent. So, let's go right back to the beginning, I guess, to start yeah. with. Um, we will talk about the knee injury at yeah. some point. Um, but yeah, if we go all the way back, sort of a dozen years, you was a 21 year old yeah. in France. Um, made your debut for Stade Brest, I think I've pronounced yeah, that Stade correctly. Against none other than PSG. Yeah. So, nice easy start to life as a pro footballer. I've written yeah. down a few names that, that, that played in that game. Blaise Matuidi. Yeah. A certain Mr. Beckham. Yeah. And a, and a certain Mr. Ibrahimovic, yeah. who I think scored a couple that day. Yeah. But what was, just, what was that like, making your debut as a pro footballer? Yeah, Obviously, was, big stadium yeah. and just just them names must have been ridiculous. Yeah, it was, it was a dream. Because the thing is, uh, I wasn't supposed to play that game. Okay. Because... Um, um, I was coming back from injury, so the Monday I trained, and then uh, the game was on the Sunday. And okay. the, the the game before, we had three injuries at the back because I, I was a centre back at the time. Okay. And uh, yeah, I wasn't supposed to, to play that game. Then yeah, so my name starting. So so you ended up actually marking Mr. Ibrahimovic yeah. to a degree, yeah, yeah, <laughs> which must yeah. have been. Yeah, it's called a free kick. I've never seen a free kick with that much power. <laughs> it was a joke when he even yeah, brought it up to like yeah. when he retired. He was still, no, but, still ridiculous. Yeah, that was that was a great. That was a great moment of my career because the atmosphere was great. Mm -hmm. That was the second last game of the season. So that was the last game of the pit of PSG at home. Okay. So they were celebrating the title. Of course, and, yeah, that uh, was right at the start yeah, of the, yeah. the, the regime as it is yeah, now, when they started yeah. to win absolutely everything. Yeah, and um, yeah, the stadium was full, good atmosphere, obviously we lost, so in my, in my head it's, it's still, uh, I'm a bit bitter about the, the, that, that memory because obviously we lost and I'm a, I'm a competitor. And of I'm course, yeah, you yeah. want to win at the end of the day. But when I step back and then look at the bigger picture, I was like, I'm like, yeah, it's, it was a great experience to play against those players. Yeah, and I guess if yeah. someone had said to you as a kid, your debut's going to be yeah. away to PSG, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Beckham, yeah. Sweeney, Ibrahimovic are yeah. on the opposing team, you'd have gone, yeah, cheers, yeah, thanks yeah, very much. That, yeah. <laughs> but of course, when you step over the white line, there's that competitive yeah. nature that's pretty yeah. intense, and yeah, you obviously you don't want to lose the football yeah. match, but yeah. there's, there's worse teams to lose to, on yeah, exactly. I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was then quite a swap, yeah. because a couple of years later, you trade France, PSG away yeah. for for Northern England. <laughs> yeah. Damn <Damaged, laughs> grey, cold. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's the summer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so, so how did that move come about? Like was it always part of the plan for, for Timmy Dieng as a kid to, to try and make his way in England? Or was it, it just a move that came about on the off chance and you thought, right, let's 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 take the opportunity. Yeah. Did, what was the process from I would say I would say a bit of both. Okay. Because as a as a kid, I'm an Arsenal fan. So um uh, game yesterday. Yeah, 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 that was pretty good. Yeah, we talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, and I always like to watch the Premier League and English football and in France we see English football as um good atmosphere in every stage, mm -hmm. um, even in lower leagues. So for me that was I always had a dream to come and play in England and um so I got released by uh, my club in France. Um, I had a few options in France, but an agent came mm -hmm. and uh, offered me a try to offered me to go and try to hold them. They were they were in League One at the time, mm -hmm. so I went there, um, trained for two days, played the game, and then yeah, signed a two year deal. And the rest is history. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's just because it's there's I mean there's changes. And there's, yeah, you see some players go from one end of the country yeah, to the other, but yeah. to swap France from, yeah. from, from right up the top yeah. of England was, was was quite a move. Yeah, but and it was a big change on the pitch as well because I was I was, I've always been a centre half in mm -hmm. France, and then when I came here, my the agent said I was playing centre mid, so I came on trial as a centre mid. Okay, and yeah, since then. I, well, the first, my first two seasons at Oldham, I was playing sometimes centre half, sometimes centre mid. That's when I moved to Bradford, I played just centre mid, yeah. What do you prefer? Um, 
It depends. I like I like both positions. I like both positions. Um, I suppose it's more glory with midfield, which you can get into yeah, position box. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get your name in the paper yeah, and that's everyone true, sees yeah, your name in yeah. the stand. You don't get so much of that as a defender. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. And then from from Oldham, there was there were spells at, at Bradford, yeah. uh, South End, which yeah. is a bit more local to where you yeah. are now, of course. Um, you went to Exeter, yeah. summer of 2021. Um, one promotion out yeah. of the very division that we're in at the moment. Yeah. And also one player of the year. That must have been incredible. I've written down, was that a highlight of your career? Not just in terms of, of promotion, because obviously promotions mm -hmm. are highlights. Um, and certainly, no disrespect to lower league players, yeah. like you don't get to play at Wembley and Old Trafford yeah. and that type of thing all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so, so any promotion you enjoy a bit more. But it must have been sort of a, a, a double win to, to be voted by your supporters to, to be player of the year as well in your first season. Yeah, that was yeah, that that's definitely the highlight of my of my career because as a as a player, I think winning is the best is the best feeling. Of course. Um, playing in big stadium is is good, but achieving something with the team, like winning a promotion or winning a title, that's that's the best thing. That's what, you, that's what you play the game yeah, that's for, what isn't it? You, you don't get a medal for, for yeah. playing in front of 80,000. Yeah, like, exactly, exactly. Um, so yeah, and, and being voted as a as player of the season from the fans is, is yeah, I was really proud. I was really proud and um, yeah. So you should play midfield more often. Yeah, maybe. Like, yeah, yeah. Hard to get question for you. <laughs> yeah. um, you only stayed there 18 months though, which was which was yeah. quite surprising. And, and I was doing a bit of research and you played, I think it was 68 times mm -hmm. in, in that 18 months. Yeah. And you were still pretty much a regular in yeah. the first half of, of the season that's just ended, 22-23. Yeah. So <clears throat> let's now talk about Jules. Um, was the move a surprise to you, having been player of the year? Mm -hmm. I mean, you only missed out on the title on goal difference. Yeah, true, yeah. Um, so it's not like your abilities or regularity in the first team was, was diminishing in any way. So, so, so how did the move to Kent come about? Was it something that you were actively looking for or was it that you got told a bid's come in so we're going to give you permission to, to talk to Jules or, mm. or make the decision yourself? No, nah, um, so my situation at, at Exeter so Cause remember you played against us, didn't you? Yeah, you played the league yeah, cup yeah, yeah, yeah. on penalties. Yeah. Um, and then, like I say, I looked at various websites, and I think you'd still played sort of twenty plus games in all competitions yeah, yeah, up to January. Yeah. So you were still yeah. a big part of that team. Yeah. But the thing is, um, obviously, we changed manager during that season because mm -hmm. uh, the manager that signed me went to Rotherham. Yep. And uh, a new manager came. It's like Gary. Gary Caldwell. Caldwell. Yeah. Caldwell. Yeah. yeah. And um, no, yeah, I've been. I was playing. I played a good amount of games. But it's just that um, in December, I started to feel that, uh, for example, in training I was playing centre half, and in games, uh, the manager put me on the bench and then I was coming on as a ten. So I was like, ah, maybe I'm not in his plan or yeah, because that's not just yeah training as a position and then yeah. coming on in that position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's completely different. Yeah, that's completely top, different yeah. and. I wasn't happy with my situation at the time. Okay. So, um, obviously, I'm asking because yeah, you're, you're leaving a club that was, I think, sort of just about mid table. We yeah, yeah. one and doing, no, yeah. doing relatively right, well yeah. to come to Jules, who were, and we'll, we'll talk about yeah. that more. But obviously, we were we were bottom yeah. of the league. Like. Yeah, yeah. Now the thing is, yeah, I wasn't happy with my football situation at the time. I was happy at the club. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, great club, great people. The fans were amazing as mm -hmm. well. Um, the players. I had no, no problem, it's just my just on the pitch situation, I wasn't really happy with it and I could feel that going forward it, would, it wouldn't improve. So maybe. you felt you'd have probably played less and less yeah, as the season yeah, progressed? Yes, yeah, maybe. Um, so when I heard that Gillingham was interested, um, yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm open to, to listen to, uh, to what they say, so they made a bid. Um, uh, yeah, Exeter rejected it. Okay. But I had a release clause in my contract, so... So it's not a word that Jules had to bring. 
so familiar with over the last few seasons yeah, yeah. until Brad took over. And that's no disrespect to the, yeah, yeah. the previous regime, but it was yeah. it was nice to see that Jules were able to go out and buy players mm. that they wanted yeah. rather than what was left behind. So yeah, just yeah, yeah. And again, I mean that with the most respect. So yeah, yeah. when we were seeing that, oh, we're paying a fee for a player that mm. you know, sort of yeah. a division above, it was it was we were starting to think, yeah, this is. Yeah. This is the, the first sort of steps along the yeah. way in this yeah. after this takeover process, which is really exciting. Mm. So yeah, so they made the bid. Uh, then I, I took with um, so the bid has I've been they had to accept it. Mm -hmm. Accept it, had to accept it. Uh, then I talked to um, Brad Poiskali and uh, Kenny Jacket. Mm -hmm. um, they talked to me about the club, the, the ambition of the club, and um, yeah, it was sold because I could feel their passion and I could feel that they would do everything to first stay up, mm -hmm. stay in that division that season because obviously we, we, we were rock bottom. We I were rock bottom. Yeah, that was my next question. Is yeah. What was it that essentially persuaded you to, 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 yeah. to swap halfway up League One for, for rock bottom in League Two? And we were, I think we played hard at And if we'd lost that game, I think we'd have been about 10 points adrift of yeah, safety. That's, so yeah. it, was, it was a big... So it's a big move for you, not just in terms of geography, but yeah. in terms of your career as well. Because you're no, going into a club that was that was in a relegation battle to stay in, in the football league. Yeah, but when I signed, I don't know why, but for me, I never thought we would go down. Okay. For me, I was sure that we would stay up. That's because you've not watched us for the first half of the season. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, but for me, I don't know. It's I was... I had belief, I had belief in me uh, that we, we would turn the, um, the situation around mm -hmm. and uh, that's what we did. And, um, but what pushed me to sign here is that the ambition to go, not, not just to stay in the league that last season, but to get promoted this season and then keep... Uh, so there was a bigger, yeah. a bigger project. Yeah, a bigger project. Just, yeah, that's just, just that six months from yeah, January to the end exactly. of the season. Exactly, the yeah. project, yeah, that's the project that's that. Because what that were you, the second yeah. signing? Uh, yeah, after Tom, yeah, after Tom, because Tom, yeah. Tom was announced, I think, just before. Yeah, before. I think not New Year's Day yeah, or something. Yeah. yeah, but unfortunately, couldn't play for a while because yeah. of the rules. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then yeah, I think then we got Ollie and, and Lapo came in shortly yeah. afterwards. Yeah, yeah. I think that's when we all started to believe yeah, as well. Because like. I think uh, Tom, Ollie, and me, we started the game against Hartlepool here. Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Tom scored down his end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Ollie yeah. should have got one as well. Yeah. yeah. And I remember then Don scored it. Yeah, decent, I remember. Decent, yeah, 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 down yeah, just after yeah. they one disallowed. Yeah, I mean that was probably a point for me just to go off on a tangent. Was like, oh, we finally had a bit of luck that's gone mm. our way. Yeah, because like, before that, that would have been that would have been allowed. The, the Omera one that got disallowed, yeah. the one that hit the post would have yeah, got yeah, it, and yeah. we'd have been two one down. That's and so, true. And then that's... we went straight up the other end and went two nil up, and, and I think that was where it, the whole place just yeah. sort of went whoosh. Yeah, and we all thought that we was going to be all right. Yeah. And even when I signed up, I, I didn't feel that it was. Even the the atmosphere it, it, at the club, the mood at the club, I didn't feel that we were rock bottom mm -hmm. because I could feel a buzz about the club. Even the players were they they were that still belief in them. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, I think a lot of that probably came from the, the announcement just before Christmas that, that Brad and, and Shannon yeah, had taken over because yeah. it just gave everyone a, a, a massive lift. Mm -hmm. And I've laughed and said it was, it was the best Christmas present I've yeah. ever given years. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's not listening. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't watch, so that's absolutely <laughs> fine. I'll get away with that one. We, we've spoken about the turnaround, though, Tim, in terms yeah. of you felt that we'd be absolutely fine. Yeah. Because, number one, I suppose, as a pro, you believe in your own ability, yeah. but you're also believing in, in Neil Harris's ability, yeah. Andy Jacket, Andy Hessenthal, yeah. his recruitment ability, and, and the new signings that were coming in to join yeah. you as well. But were you... A little bit surprised by how well we turned it round and how quickly because I think up until you joined we'd scored six or seven goals in half a season yeah, yeah, and then yeah, we, lost, yeah. I think we scored seven goals in two and a half games because we yeah. beat Hartlepool out here 2-0 yeah. we went to Colchester and won 2-0 yeah. and then we scored three at Swindon in that mad game yeah, yeah, true, yeah. where I think it was we were 2-1 up after about eight minutes yeah, that was yeah, nuts because yeah. you, you scored in that yeah, game yeah, yeah. we well. went down after one minute or something yeah, like that. about 40 seconds and then, and then after 14 minutes, we three, three one up. You scored. Yeah. Uh, Will Wright scored a penalty, yeah. and Tom a header. Yeah, I think it, yeah. Any frustration we didn't see it had a second yeah. half, but it was uh, it was a mad game. Yeah. But yeah, it went from seven goals in half a season to seven yeah. goals in about yeah. a week and a half. It, yeah. was, it was crazy. Yeah, that was. But with the player, I think I was surprised that um, 
the club was rock bottom with okay. the players that we, we, we had. Because um, I think there was quality in the, in mm -hmm. the team and uh, obviously with a few uh, more additions we, we turned it around but yeah, we, we had quality and that's why I knew that we would be fine. Yeah, and it, but yeah, I mean, because I mean, there were times when people talked about we was almost in the top half, which was yeah, probably think unthinkable. Can, yeah, certainly from an outsider's yeah. perspective, like I say, you know the players that you're joining, you know mm. the other players that are coming in, and you, you see them on a day-to-day -day yeah. basis, or you've at least played with them or against them throughout yeah. your career. Obviously, we're only doing it from a fan perspective. Mm. Um, but I suppose that has a lot to do with, with confidence, doesn't it? Yeah, when yeah, you're getting yeah. a run, yeah. winning games, everything yeah. comes in still. Exactly. I suppose yeah. when you keep losing football matches, yeah. you probably have an extra touch. Mm. You take too long with the pass, or you don't yeah, shoot. No, when yeah, you're confidence plays a big part in, in football, yeah, definitely. So yeah, 7 eighth was, was phenomenal from, from where we yeah. were. And I think we were the second second highest points tally over the yeah, second half of the season. Nice and stopped yeah. Port, and uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was nice to, to look forward to coming mm. and watch football again because there were there were certainly times in the first half yeah, of the campaign imagine. where I was only coming to home games because because I'd already paid for a season yeah, ticket. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had all these visions after relegation of, of, of going to new away grounds mm. and I think I went to Wimbledon the first day we lost 2-0 I didn't go anywhere until Sutton and we lost 2-1 that was just before all you boys were joining because that was in yeah. between Christmas and New yeah. Year yeah, yeah. so it was it was just such a, a boost mm. as, as fans yeah to, to want to come and watch your football club and almost fall in love with it all over again, which mm. was great. So thanks, I suppose, you know, you know, I handed that out away for you and all the boys that came. And obviously yeah. there's the small matter of, of Mr. Gallinson's dollars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, your current situation is, is obviously a frustrating one. Yeah. So I just want to pick your brains about that. Um, we all know about the tackle at Grimsby and, and Neil's had his say on it. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure he's had a reply still yet from yeah, the Fraser Association. I haven't so, heard anything. Um, <laughs> but, then, but like you've said to me before we press record, that it's done now, you can't change it, yeah. you've just got to crack on and, yeah, and get yeah. yourself fit. So yeah. what exactly was it that you ended up, was it medial ligaments? Or? Yeah, uh, MCL, uh, grade two, a tear. So, um, so yeah, could have been worse. After, after, when I, I was going to say, you're going to pick a ligament. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You yeah. don't want it to be anterior yeah, yeah, yeah. ligament because yeah. that, that can be, a, that's sort of nine yeah. months to a year. I think when I, I heard the, the result of the scan, I was, obviously I was gutted because I would... But was you fearing the, the worst? Yeah, yeah. I, I was fearing, yeah, I would be out for months, but now it's just a matter of weeks, I think. We, we see how it goes now, but mm -hmm. yeah. So what stage are you at in the recovery? So you're still sitting here wearing a quiet Yeah, I'm still wearing the race at the moment. moment so you're still no running or nothing yet? No, no, I'm not running yet. Um, just we see how it goes day by day and um, yeah, trust the medical staff. Of course. So what does so what does your day to day now involve? Because obviously I'm sure it must be frustrating because you yeah. can't be amongst the boys. You, you yeah. see them come in and pick up their boots and go off to the training yeah, ground yeah, and that's what you want to be doing. Mm -hmm. So what is it, gym work, swimming pools, that type of things? Or? Yes, just gym work. Gym yeah, gym <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's boring and, and lonely, yeah, sometimes, but it's part of the job, and uh, yeah, you have to stay strong mentally. And uh, yeah, I try to see the positive in every situation and and yeah, keep the smile and keep going. But I think that is one thing that the fans sort of noticed from you. Yeah. I remember we kept, the, we kept getting the reels at the end of games yeah. last season, you screaming into yeah. the camera, <laughs> chatting something, and you know, yeah. the target was good fun. And yeah, we've not seen enough of it over, over recent weeks, unfortunately, because of, because of the injury. But yeah. obviously, swift recovery, and, and fingers crossed we get to see you doing what you do yeah. on the pitch sooner rather than later. Thank you. Um, in terms of this season, I suppose it's even more frustrating because this is your second injury of the campaign because I think yeah. you missed the first yeah, week or so because yeah. you some sort of muscle strain yeah. so you missed stock pull yeah. um, but the good thing now from a fan perspective is obviously you've got a bigger a better squad so yeah. if you lose one player of your quality Ethan came in that yeah. day it doesn't diminish the quality yeah. you can do yeah. an equally good job we started really well yeah at least I think we have yeah. I mean we've won six out of nine That's in the league yeah. we beat Southampton in the cup we was unlucky at Luton mm. um, we've won our first Papa John's group game I know it's a competition that serves it's a certain still, yeah, purpose. It's, it's, it's still a game to win. And so yeah. what's, what's your take on it as footballers? I assume it's just another game to you. Because as fans, it's since the B teams came mm. in from the Premier League, I think that sort of it's, it's been cheapened, yeah. I think, from a fan perspective. But I suppose as a professional footballer, you're just seeing it as another opportunity to get 90 minutes and try and win another football match. Exactly. That's Usually uh, it's the players that don't have 
a, a lot of game time mm-hmm. that played that game, and that's that's an opportunity for them to to show that the, the, to show their quality and yeah. to the manager and um, and yeah, even players that play regularly that play that game, it's the same. Just play, try to win, and it's a cup that is is winnable, I think. Well, that was and that was my point this that, year. That, that could give us a trip to Wembley, and that's um, the thing. I yeah, wonder how many fans would suddenly stop boycotting if, yeah. if we get to the quarterfinals yeah. or the semi-finals. And it's always, I mean, I think it was, it was a few years since Jill's got to like the area final, mm. um, 2014, 15. I think we lost to Bristol City. Um, that was a good Bristol City side. That I think won yeah, they won the league, one league, one yeah. that year, and one. Yeah, I think we got beat by about four times. That's. I think we lost to them in the league twice. Yes. No. We might have drawn, I think we drew at their place in the league, yeah. but they won the league. They beat us, they beat us here 3 0. Okay. They beat us here in the area nah, semi final and yeah, they won was, that competition as well. Yeah, yeah that was a very good side cool. under Steve Cox. That, that was my first season in England. How was that? Was yeah, it would have been used at Oldham 14 yeah, 15, yeah. 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 They, had a, they had a very good side. Yeah, 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 exactly. I think Matt Smith, Matt Smith got a trick here against us in one yeah. of the games. Oh. Absolutely unplayable. <laughs> um, anyway, went off on a little bit of a tangent. I want to ask you about social media yep. and how you react to certain things that you potentially because you're on twitter or yeah. x or whatever it's called yeah. Yeah. you're on instagram yeah so it's great for us as fans when we win games till we see yeah. you boys retweeting and posting and, and that type of thing we think it's brilliant yeah. but i think we have to understand that different players and individuals take different approaches when maybe it's more negative mm. Because I've seen things after Saturday on social media directed at certain individuals and, and management that's just frankly ridiculous mm. for a team that's that's won six out of nine in the league and is currently second in the division after twenty percent of the season's mm. gone. Mm. I understand it's it's a marathon, not a sprint, and all that type of thing. But I I personally don't get what seems to be an overreaction. How do you, as players, deal with it? Just delete the app or just ignore it, or um, because you must get frustrated. Not yeah, if you see someone who's essentially digging out one of your mates. Because mm. I've seen things after Saturday, oh, this player's not trying, this player's rubbish, the manager ain't got a clue. And I'm thinking, we've got 59 points in the calendar year. Like, yeah. Well, listen, it's, 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 it's life. You can't... You I can't, get that everyone's entitled to an yeah, opinion. Yeah, yeah. yeah but there's just ways time. and means of, of going about yeah. it would be my um, thoughts on it. Yeah, at first, when I started, I remember I was reading everything, and um, but at some point I was like, nah, I, I, I need to stay, I need to stop reading, and uh, just focus on myself, because yeah. that, for example, me, when I, when I feel that I don't play well, um, I'm frustrated at myself. Oh, so but, you're going to know if you've yeah, had a I, I know if I did bad before I have, yeah. someone on Twitter yeah. starts telling me. I don't me need that. someone else to come and tell me that I had a bad game. Hmm. And especially on Twitter, if, obviously if the staff, the manager, talk to me, as a, I would listen to them. And But on tw- if it's constructive critics, I would take it. That's, if that's it, my issue with social yeah, media. That's the you see yeah. a lot of people just abuse yeah. someone yeah. when after they've, you know, like, oh, someone's Mr. Chance. Well, they're not Mr. Chance on yeah, purpose. Exactly, not, exactly. Max hasn't, not, and it's not, it wasn't directed mm. at Max, but Max hasn't purposely knocked it back to Jake yeah. on Saturday to concede yeah, yeah, yeah. a goal. It's, and, and you see lots of people talk about mental health and that type of mm. thing. And yeah, I, that, almost, I almost feel that footballers get forgotten in that conversation. Yeah, it's like, oh, so look yeah. after your mates. And we sadly had this in last week where a Jules fan lost his life. Mm. And we've seen everyone talking about mental health and yeah. look after your friends. But it's almost like professional sports per- people, not just footballers, mm. I'd imagine, sort of get forgotten. It's almost like, oh, they, they're just, it's just free for all with footballers. You yeah. can go and dig them out wherever you like and they just have to put up with it. And I, I think that's wrong. No, that, yeah, definitely. That's certainly, the abuse on the social media certainly don't help with mental health. And, and we talk about confidence. <laughs> Uh, if confidence plays a big part in in the game, and being abused by your own fans mm-hmm. that doesn't help the confidence. I get the frustration from the fans when a player is not playing well and that, but abusing him won't help him to play better. And the way I break it down is, this is your job at the end of yeah. the day. So in the same way you're a professional footballer. I could be a salesman, someone mm. could be a builder. Mm. But if a builder goes and 
doesn't build a wall correctly, yeah. his boss doesn't come and start screaming and shouting exactly. abuse and swearing at him. Yeah. So why should you boys have to put up with that? I, and, and I think I get that we're in you're in a privileged position, yeah, but you all understand that as yeah. well. Yeah, no, but we I think it just gets the job that, that footballers are just robots with loads of money, and I think that's completely <laughs> wrong. Yeah, I mean it's yeah, it's, it's wrong, but it's, it's part of the job, and we have to we have to deal with it. That's unfortunately. Because I don't think he's going to stop. <laughs> no, well, it, it's one of the, the bad sides of yeah. social media. There's, there's yeah. great sides to it, which is where I'm lucky enough to, to come and talk to, to you and yeah. stuff like that. And then YouTube and, and Twitter's mm. brilliant in bringing people together. And it does so many great things. Mm. But I think there is a, a darker side to it that, that needs to be yeah. maybe policed a bit better. Yeah, maybe. maybe. And but the thing is, it's only a small part of the fan base, I think, that... Uh, abuse people mm -hmm. usually most of the people um yeah just stay behind the team and and want us to do well and and don't abuse us <laughs> <laughs> and it, it helps when you win football matches yeah it's it's so, it's, 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 there you go so that's all you've got to do yeah. simple yeah that's problem yeah. solved well, well, that's every what, game that's what we're trying I, I think that's unfortunately what we, some fans think yeah. we, we should win every game <laughs> as well but if, if only football was that easy um I want to talk to you about Neil Harris. He has obviously played a big part in you, you coming to the football mm. club along with Brad and yeah. Paul Scalley and Hesse and Kenny Jacket and, and, and I'm sure other people. Yeah. Um, just, just, just how good he is a manager in terms of, because I think a lot of people would agree that in terms of man management, um, he's absolutely top draw. Yeah. So, so, so what are Neil's best traits? Um, I could ask you this because it yeah. doesn't look like you're just trying to get in the team. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> No, he's a, he's, I think he's a great manager he's, and he's, he proved uh, a, a higher level mm -hmm. than, than me too, that he's, he's a good manager, um, he's passionate about his work, That's, you can feel it every day, he's, he's got passion, he, he's working hard, he wants to, yeah, he wants to put us in the best conditions to, to perform um, on, the, on the Saturday and, and Tuesday nights as well. Um, yeah, I think not. And his man manager is good because he tries to keep everyone involved. Obviously, there's players that don't play because you have to manage a group. You don't manage just 11 or 14 players. You manage so sort of 20, yeah, plus, yeah, 20 plus players and you have to keep everyone involved and engaged for the team. And that I think he's doing that very well. So, so yeah, I think he's a good manager, yeah. Okay, good, yeah. Like, yeah I'm, I'm so glad that Again, I find it frustrating as a fan because people call him like I've seen polls come up on social media over the weekend. Is he should he still be in charge? I'm thinking well, there was yeah. plenty of opportunities from we're second in league exactly league. Was, from August to December yeah. last year was your opportunity yeah. to say is Neil Harris the right man when well, we couldn't score a goal yeah. and win a football match. But again, again there was extenuating circumstances. Yeah. But I find it baffling. But yeah, I, I think he's the right man, and yeah. of course we all want to see the team score more goals. Yeah, we, we want, but again, we it comes to back to you, like, we're probably not going, oh, we'll just get to one and we'll just stop them. Oh, well, let's make it difficult just yeah. for a laugh. It's, it's not like that at all. Mm. Yeah, it's football, you can't win every game for years unless, you, unless you're Man City or even Man City. They don't, don't do it all yeah, the time, but yeah. They don't do it all the time, so it's, yeah, we're human, we make mistakes and, and yeah, the fans have to accept it. I think, yeah. Yeah, I think we do to a degree. Again, we can, like you say, like we said earlier, it all comes, we can be frustrated and we mm -hmm. can criticise, but there's, do it in the right way. Exactly, exactly. Anyway, um, final question before I let you disappear. And again, appreciate your time. We've, we've spoken about Exeter, 21-22. You, you, you finished second on goal difference. I think it was, it was only about half a dozen goals that separated you from actually yeah. winning the title. It was Forest Green that, that won the league that year. Um, what sort of similarities do you see between between this Gillingham squad and, and, and that Exeter squad are in terms of personnel, spirit, togetherness? Mm. Well, I think um, the first thing is that um, I think they for every position there is competition. Mm -hmm. So that push the player that's, that's got the shirt on the Saturday to perform, otherwise he's gonna, someone's going to come and take, you take, take, yeah, take your place. So that's that's a big part of a, a successful team, I think, and um, and the yeah the togetherness with the group, we've got good lads, um, we've got a good bond together, and um, yeah I can see some similarities, and I think we've got what it takes to um, to get promoted and to be successful during this season. Now it's not guaranteed we're gonna do it, but no, of course 
because we still have to perform and still have to execute on on the on game day. But yeah, I think we've got what it takes to uh, to get promoted. Yeah, yeah, yeah I hope so. I mean, it's, after the last couple of years, it's just nice to come and watch us win for more fo- win more football matches. Yeah. But like you say, there's there's no guarantee that you're going to yeah. get promoted. Yeah. There's, there's probably I said at the start of the season, I think there's probably two thirds of the division think they can get in the playoffs and yeah. half the division yeah, thinks yeah. they can get in the top three. So yeah. there's going to be yeah. some really disappointed fan bases exactly. and yeah. chairman and, and managers yeah. coming in this yeah. season. Let's hope it's not us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tim, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you for your yeah. time. I really enjoyed the problem. Problem. So yeah. Thank you very much. No Jules fans, um, I'm sure you're all following Timmy on, on Twitter and Instagram. If not, I will put his details in the description at the bottom of the video. Thanks as always for your ongoing support. Please go and smash a like. Please keep subscribing, retweeting, sharing, doing all that you can. We'll be back later in the week. There might be a match day live for the B-team game on Tuesday night. If not, it'll be Wednesday evening where I will return with a Mansfield Town fan previewing a big game next weekend. Until then, enjoy your week and up the jewels.